howdy. Popular science since 150 years. <laughs> mm. It's approximately as long as the paradigm is going on. Geologists, we are not ready for volcanoes. A new study highlights the importance of preparing for catastrophic volcanic eruptions. Published on August 19th. So that's already an elderly article. It's two days old or something. A cloud of deadly volcanic ash spews from a volcano. I would say this is Semeru. Humans have marveled at the awesome power of volcanoes for centuries. Earlier this month, tourists Tourists flock to Iceland to see lava flowing from a fissure eruption on the Reykjans Peninsula. The so-called land of fire and ice saw a huge burst in tourism following the eruption of Eyjafjallajökull in 2010. Despite their magnetic pull, volcanic eruptions are a big threat to humanity. A study released yesterday in Nature from the University of Cambridge Center for the Study of Existential Risk, CSER, in the University of Birmingham found that there is a general misconception of the lethal threat volcanoes pose to society and planet Earth at large. According to the two authors, Michael Cassidy and Laura Money, this misconception has led to general apathy about preparing for a major eruption, despite it posing a greater risk than an asteroid strike. January's eruption of the Honga Tonga Pai volcano in Tonga was the largest explosion recorded by instruments. Ash was dumped over hundreds of miles of land and sea, affecting everything from infrastructure to fish stocks. The eruption damaged 36.4% of Tonga's gross domestic product, according to the World Bank. The severing of submarine cables cut off the nation in the southern Pacific Ocean's communication with the outside world for a full month. It blasted enough water into fill 58,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools into the atmosphere. Stratosphere. Uh, funny sentence. <clears throat> and the shockwave sent tsunamis to the Japanese and North and South American coastlines. There was the atmospheric shockwave as well, which circled the Earth twice. All of this devastation was caused by an eruption that lasted only 11 hours. Had it gone longer, one longer, uh, the repercussions on the climate, food resources and other infrastructures would have been catastrophic. So there is so much stuff in the southern hemisphere, in the atmosphere from this eruption. It will influence weather for years. <clears throat> but anyway. The Tonga eruption was the volcanic equivalent of an asteroid just missing the Earth and needs to be treated as a wake-up call. Wrote money. This threat isn't going away. The eruptions are more prevalent than researchers previously believed. Recent data from ice cores, long cylinders of glacial ice uncovered by drilling into glacier or mountain, shows that an eruption 10 to 100 times larger than the one in Tonga occurs once every 625 years, or twice as often as had been previously thought. These events are categorized in the Volcanic Explosive Index, VEI, that measures the explosiveness of volcanoes. The world hasn't seen a magnitude 7 event since the eruption of Indonesia's Mount Dambora in 1815. In the archipelago, archipelago an estimated 100,000 people lost their lives from volcanic flows, tsunamis damaged from massive rocks, ashes, drawing crops and homes and additional collateral damages. 
Globally, temperatures dropped as much as 3 degrees Fahrenheit, triggering what scientists and historians call the year without the summer. And major societal effects, mass crop failures led to famine, which led to uprisings and epidemics. So there has been this snowstorm in Southern America and all this kind of stuff. So the Tonga eruption is in full play in the Southern Hemisphere. And there might be still some volcanoes popping up in the fall or even in winter. I'm not talking only about Iceland or Azores or La Palma or Italy volcanoes. Why not Central European Euro volcanoes, Greek, Turkey, Russia, Alaska, Svalbard. Yeah, just to name a few in the Northern Hemisphere. Yellowstone? Anyway. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, those living in the face of any active volcano should evacuate if told to. Shelter in place by sealing all doors and windows, maintaining a disaster supply kit. On a more macro level, the study authors stressed the importance of real-time targeted communication of ash fallout, gas plumes and volcanic flows. They posed that quicker message and preferably through text messages could be better pre could better prepare communities and to help in disaster relief. The other side of Volcano Ready Communities project in Saint Vincent, Saint Vincent and uh, Grenada as a recent success story. Twenty the project evacuated twenty two thousand people ahead of an eruption in April. 2021. Well, it's still continuing. Okay. To best prevent more catastrophes, CSER calls for increased research into volcano geoengineering. <laughs> okay. Including includes the studying of countering aerosols released by a massive eruption. These sunny particles can block out the sun and lead to a volcanic winter. CSIER also encourages more debate on whether or not to investigate how to manipulate the pockets of mama magma beneath active volcanoes. <laughs> yeah, good luck with this. Directly affecting volcanic behavior may seem incon inconceivable, but so did the deflection of asteroids until the formation of NASA Planetary Defense Coordination Office in 2016. Yes, and there has been many surprise asteroids falling on Earth, despite the Planetary Defense Coordination Office being in place or whatever. <laughs> yeah. The risk, the risks of a massive eruption that devastates global society is significant. The current underinvestment in responding to this risk is simply reckless. No one can blame me for not trying to warn people living in the reach of, how to put it, water rains, especially glaciers. If you are nearby white rivers, like we have one here at Mount St. Helens, which is a volcano, which has growing a glacier inside the caldera. This is my white flag, well, red flag, the white rivers. The white rivers are the red flag for everyone living in the proximity of a white river. Understanding that you probably live in a volcanic region. And we are talking about France, 
Russia, Mount St. Helens we already had, which is a confirmed volcano, Germany, Valgau, Parma, Italia, Udine, Italia. These are the Alps, Alps. I have also been talking about floods in the Alps. That's part of the paper which is coming probably, hopefully, soon. Because I think it's important. Portal Horn, Portal See, the lake and its surroundings have a caldera crater like shape. If you watch it from above, there is a circular pattern very clearly visible. Which indicates that it's fed from below. So this is uh, basically a volcano erupting by water. Here is the lake. Here is the city with the floods. Here is the drainage path. And here we have also geothermal activity. The thermal bath and the plant geothermal energy plant. So, mountain water, glaciers are contemporary lava streams made out of water, hence the mountain carrying the, the glacier is a volcano. And I have been talking about geothermal energy and all these kind of things for many, 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 many times. And this article, we just read, fits in perfectly well. Since the volcanic activity on Earth has been very quiet for a very long time, people have forgotten about it. Almost all the dams within the Alps and elsewhere, where is attached some energy plant to it, a dam which provides electricity. They have been built 100 years ago or after that. Many of those probably couldn't have been built some hundreds of years ago or let's say 1500 years ago or even more because there was so much more water and action going on. It wouldn't have been possible. The action went a little bit down, the streams, obviously, also in a bigger scale, seem to dry up. Like in Europe, many rivers are drying up. Glaciers are melting, they are drying up too. And almost all the rivers, they turn out to be white rivers. So I still think it could be possible that, like a tsunami, now the water is retreating before it comes back with force. Many might be surprised of the action which can go on in the wide rivers, because there are many of them all over the place, all over the planet. We find white rivers. And there are many places on earth where we find glaciers and lakes on top of mountains. I call them crypto geysers because probably it has been forgotten that they every now and then will erupt. And since suns the sun's activity is going up, it's more active, it will rise in activity, which means Earth's 
activity will rise up too. Patterns will change, weather patterns and the water patterns. Obviously now it seems to dry out, but there will be water. Maybe even too much. But let's see, we are still some time away from the fall equinox. Let's see how the fall will develop with the fall storms in Europe, since the weather pattern is different. It has changed a lot since last fall. Might get very, very, very interesting. So if you live in a valley, make sure that you, you know where to go up. Get shelter. There will be water. But time will tell. There has been water in the past. So there will be water in the future too. And maybe it happens quicker than anyone could ever imagine. This has to be taken into. This has to be taken into account as well. The possibility of things happening quicker than thought. Earth has lost probably 20%, 22, 23, 25% of the magnetosphere's strength. North and South Pole are shifting. There has been some action from the sun. Nothing really happened. So I just think probably the Earth's core got once more like loaded. And how many times it can still take this kind of loading before it has to discharge in order to keep some kind of equilibrium. And I bet if it does discharge, there will be water coming out of the mountain in unprecedented precedented amounts. Maybe this sign of rivers drying up and all that is just a sign of earth core loading before it discharges. And probably releasing water through the ground. And also, from the atmosphere, probably simultaneously, most often it does like this. It's just not that well visible. Maybe one sign, if you see a rain warm or however they are called, before it starts to rain, all of a sudden you see how they're, they are moving on top of the ground. Yeah, they feel the water rising. That's why they come on top of the ground. I guess, I don't know. I have been talking to them, but then they don't really respond. <laughs> anyway. I leave it here. It's all about the water. Thanks.